Okay, to continue where we left off, I wanted, I'm, I'm still basing, <coughs> basing on, and I want to make sure there's a teeny little bubble so that the seams are going to roll to the inside. I get this basted and everything is in place. I'm gonna sew. Where's the bubble? See the bubble right there? So just Can you sew only base the seam allowance? Yeah, I'm like basting kind of right on where I'm gonna sew because that basting's gonna come out. Because mm -hmm. it's gotta hold where I want to sew. Mm -hmm. Otherwise there's no sense doing and it. And make sure there's little bubbles going down. Yeah, there's not really a Bubbles going down here a little bit at the bottom here because kind of like at these corners. The dog ate my thread. The dog ate your thread? You see? Oh, geez. That's what my school looks like. The dog okay. ate yours yeah, too? That's, no, it wasn't a dog, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, this is going to be great on YouTube, right? Okay, now, and remember that this is so important right here where this, where I said we clip where the end of the collar goes. Mm -hmm. And I think I also on my pattern had another notch through here or something, but the really important marking is where the end of the collar goes. And I will be clipping that, you know, all through the seam allowance, right to the stitch line. But I'm going to stitch first. So let's go to the machine. So you also clip it on the interfacing too. On the facing too, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So let's go to the machine. totally pivoting, I'm going to do an inch or two to kind of round it, sort of. It's not going to look round, okay, but that, and then I'm going to go. Another corner. I'm going to round it a couple stitches, stitch or two, and then across the hem. And I'm going to, you know, stop at the end of the facing. I'm going to trim. I'm going to take my facing out now. There. All right, then I am going to trim that seam allowance to a fourth of an inch. Probably going to need the basting thread again. 
quarter of an inch. Probably bring me the spool line. Thank you. Sorry, I tricked after you. I'm going to clip this right to the seam line. Be careful. morning I was thinking of the gentleman who taught me this. He was quite a friend and a mentor. His name was Angelo Di Bergola. He's from Bari, Italy. If you ever see this on YouTube, hi Angelo. <laughs> okay, then we're going to turn. See how that's a nice corner. It didn't, you know, when you do that stitch across, instead of a corner coming out and looking like this, it looks like this. You see, you need that little bit of curve. Yes. Okay. Okay, you see where we are here? Now, I need to base <coughs> this edge. You're not going to the arm. Not yet. Okay. I'm going to base this edge. The needle was in the top. Wood. In the top. There you go. You want me to stick this out? Okay, now, once again, with this worn, you see. My, the end of my row line is here, mm -hmm. the break. So as I'm basting this edge, I want to make sure that you don't see seams, which means um, along the lapel here to the break, I'm going to sort of sort of be rolling that seam under this way. And then when I get here, right, mm -hmm. I need to roll the seam that the way. opposite way, OK? This is really important. So now, the sticky fingers really help here. <laughs> you see, now I'm doing it just barely, barely, barely. I usually see people trying to base like this. I mean, you don't. You want it just a just a small amount of that seam kind of roll right to the inside. <coughs> now, I'm gonna do a diagonal stitch because if I did it kind of takes the place of two rows of stitching because if you did if I just uh, based it along the edge that wouldn't be enough so I'm gonna try to cheat a little bit and do a diagonal stitch that will uh, so I don't have to do that second row of stitching and you see um, my needle is going in at an angle from the straight edge. Kind of rolling it, make sure there's not a pleat. I'm not wrapping it around the edge. I don't know why I get that, but I always do. I'm not wrapping it around the edge, as you can see. And see how that's holding it nice and in place, and with that angled stitch, it's sort of taking the place of two rows of stitching. So hopefully that'll save me a little bit of time. And you notice I'm still the straight edge. My needle's going in at an angle. start rolling that seam the opposite way, right? 
give me the sticky fingers. I guess our DNA is always in anything we make, right? So now I don't see. Huh? Yeah. So blood from all the times I've Yeah, right. Fingers. So definitely our DNA <laughs> is in everything we make, right? Along with the blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. You still putting putting needles on you? Yeah, see, straight edge. My needle's going in at an angle so I can get that diagonal stitch, and it holds it nice and flat. Mm -hmm. How many times do you have to do this? One time. One time, because I'm doing a diagonal stitch. Otherwise, I'd be basting two rows, a row here and a row here. You notice everything I do is on my knee. Alright, you did a beautiful job on this. I think maybe we could keep it that way. That's it. That, don't, don't get me any more. That's it. Do the other side. Okay, then there is Okay, we'll stop here and go on to the next step.